Naloxone is more than just an antidote to opioid overdose. Naloxone is a technology for caring about each other, for caring about our communities. It's a basic, it's a matter of first aid um, and promoting life in, in every way that we can. And so in some ways, I think that, you know, I certainly work with, with, with families who have drug using children or, you know, drug using parents and getting naloxone into that family is very important because it could become a matter of life and death. And in some situations, it has become a matter of, of life or death. And fortunately, it was life that came out of it because they had naloxone. So, so getting naloxone into a family where there's one or more people in that unit using opioids is a no-brainer because somebody's life can be saved. And it's maybe a little bit more abstract to talk about helping a family unit, whatever that family unit looks like, to achieve this level of empowerment and and commitment to not only their own betterment, but to the betterment of all those people they come into contact with in their neighborhoods. You know, there's this kind of diffuse quality to empowering people with naloxone. There's like this spillover effect. And one of the things we know from some empirical research is that people, especially in the early days of take-home naloxone distribution programming, will, you know, once they've been trained with naloxone, their drug use actually goes down because they view themselves as being a central operative in the health and well-being of their network, right? So there, there is this empowering kind of quality and this role-transforming quality to naloxone. And it's the same kind of thing, but when you're working with families, I don't know, it's like a, almost like a pay it forward. It's a, an expression of goodwill. It amplifies the, the life promoting element of that family. And I, I can't help but think that that has some kind of spillover. The more, so that you have the concrete issue of someone in the family may succumb to an opioid overdose. You don't know when that's going to happen. You can't predict it. You don't know how it's going to happen. You often don't even have a clue in many cases, which family member it's going to happen to. Um, and so having it, is so much better than not having it uh, because it is the difference between life or death. There's also the concrete issue of people coming into your family unit because families are porous. We adults have friends that we bring into the household. They become known, acquainted with um, our children, with our extended family. You know, family isn't nuclear. It isn't sealed off from the rest of the world. It is a living, breathing unit with its own sort of life, and it's interconnected with all the other units of society. And you never know when, you know, someone in your family is going to be interacting with someone in the family space, and that person succumbs to an opioid overdose. Um, I have a 16-year-old son, and he's very averse to all manner of intoxicant. He just does not like the intoxication experience. But he has a good many friends who do like intoxicants, and my son is very well trained in harm reduction, and in particular naloxone use, if one of them happens to overdose. He knows how to recognize that overdose. Now that person, that friend of my son's, isn't a member of my family in the strictest sense, but I feel accountable for that, for that person. He's in my orbit, he's in our orbit, He's someone that we spend time with, about whom we care a great deal. And he's a member of our community and he's a fellow human. So we have that commitment in our household. And we have naloxone um, in just about every nook and cranny you can imagine. It's a matter of basic first aid and safety.